What's up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we're going to forge this little chunk of this big coil into an integral bolster cleaver or the thing that is in the thumbnail because it could have not turned into a cleaver. I've never forged a cleaver, especially an integral bolster cleaver, out of a piece of steel like this. So this is all going to be me just trying to make it happen doing things that I think make sense during this. I'm going to walk you through my decision making process as I'm choosing hammers, all that stuff in this episode. Hopefully you're all excited about that. Now, I do have a fan going. That's all the background noise. Fan going down here, blowing that cool 105 degree air into this 115 degree shop, trying to, trying to cool it down to a nice 105. Once I start the forge up, it's going to be about 125 in here. So that 105 degree air is going to feel like a nice breeze, which is ridiculous. And then I got the AC going in the smaller shop, so hopefully I can cool myself off. I got plenty of water. We're going to try and stay hydrated, and we're going to turn this thing into a knife. Let's go ahead, get after it, and get it knocked out. I didn't hit record on the first heat where we took the the main part of that bow out but basically what I talked about during that heat was keeping it hot for this step especially because we're taking and we're taking that bow out of that out of that banana we're unbananaing it and on the inside curve of that which is right here if you don't warm it up enough and you start stretching that steel to flatten it out you can create cracks all the way across that inner curve because it's not hot enough and you're basically shearing the steel you're cracking the steel to open it up you don't want to do that you want to make sure it's hot enough to where it can flex as you start hammering on it and let it straighten out that way it's not tearing so we're good here on the next heat what we're going to go ahead and do is flatten it out a little bit on each side we're going to use this piece of steel right here to index for where we want the sides to be we're going to flatten it down a little bit and then we're going to start drawing things out so flatten it out make it a really broad bar and then go from there all right so the whole point behind forging it flat on each side is because i need to narrow it down anyways because the bolster is not going to be that wide and it's going to make it easier for me to hit on and stretch without it bouncing everywhere. The more round it is, the more it's going to bounce everywhere. So now we're just going to do a little separation step. So all we're doing here is just stepping down the bolster area into the blade and defining that area with the straight peen and the little section that I have rounded just like the straight peen is.
course. Straighten that out a little bit. Uh, we'll of course go through and refine that whole area as we start moving things. But I wanted to go ahead and pinch that. The next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna hang this off the edge, and then we're gonna step that down to give us a little definition of where the heel is. And all we're doing here is kind of half on, half off blows so that we can start bringing down that heel. And what this is going to do is it's going to start pinching our choil, or not our, well, kind of our choil, our bolster area. So what I'm going to do now is heat it back up, round off this bolster area just a little bit, and then do it again. Now we're gonna take the rounding side of a rounding hammer. We're gonna start pulling everything out. Make sure you hit on both sides. So on these next few heats, we're going to use our cross pin and start pulling everything down. Okay, now we're going to take our straight peen, we're going to start hammering along the spine here, and we're going to thin that out just a little bit more and center our spine in the bolster, using it where it matches up on the anvil, the same round. So all we're doing at this point right here is we're using, this is a cross and straight peen that I made. It's just a Harbor Freight that I had to change the profile on. But we're pulling down and then we're gonna go ahead and just get a little bit more width out of it. Then we'll stop there and we'll go ahead and draw our tang out.
All right, now that we got that tang set up, it's time to go ahead and start stretching everything out here. You go in with the rounding hammer, move everything out. Okay, now on this heat, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna thin out this area that I left thick right up here in the Ricasso area. See, what that's gonna do is as I'm hitting that, it's making this section wider. We're gonna keep doing that about two more heats. Okay, now we're going to forge this to about 85% done on the blade and then we're going to refine the bolster and then we'll finish the last 15% after that because we're going to screw up a bunch of stuff when we start messing with this bolster and I want to be able to fix it later. So on this heat, we're going to take the round side of our rounding hammer and we're going to start compressing our bevels down. We're going to be hammering primarily on the bottom half of the blade and then we'll be flattening it with the flat side of the rounding hammer. But we're using the round to really go aggressive with this compression and we're going to start stretching this edge out. Now we're going to go ahead and start cleaning up the bolster area and get that looking good and kind of rounded. And I'm using a, just a ball peen hammer that I've got a rounded side on for this. Now the reason why I like using this particular hammer to do this is it's not very heavy and with that slight round on it, it doesn't deform the steel that much. It just lets us go ahead and profile it and get everything nice and smooth. And all I'm trying to do right now is just round everything so that it's comfortable once I start putting the handle on it. So 
so when we're doing fine work like this, we don't need a ton of heat in this because we're not trying to move a bunch of steel. We're just trying to profile and, and make things look smooth. Now we're going to come in and clean up the bolster area, matching up the area here with the hammer. We're just going gentle taps on it. See, what we're trying to do at this point is we're trying to make where it dives in from the bolster into the spine here even on both sides, on top and bottom. We're just trying to round it in. We're just going to sit there and massage it on each side until we get that to line up. So now that we got the bolster all situated, we can go ahead and finish our bevels the rest of the way. So of course, I forgot to turn the mic on for this step, but I'm just using that little auto body hammer that I use to planish to go ahead and make those bevels nice and flat. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get our tang lined up. I say that, but it's pretty much already lined up. So we're just gonna do a little bit of straightening on it. Is the ball paint for this.
Now what I need to do is go ahead and grind in my tang, just a rough, rough tang here. I've got a couple of lines marked on here going around it. And then I went ahead and marked a center line down both top and bottom of the tang. What we're going to do is we're just going to grind that down, remove a bulk of this material here, and then just kind of even it up a little bit. Whenever I go through and get ready to do the handle, I'll really refine this 100% square off that where it steps down from the bolster into the tang. We'll do all that then. This is just a rough profiling on the tang. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this Shop Talk Tuesday up here with some of this. Now, are some of y'all going to think, that's just kind of goofy looking. I don't like that. Probably. But you got to trust the vision. You got to trust how I design my knives and the things that I think through whenever I'm making them or drawing them or designing them. The end result is going to be really cool. Okay? So just trust me on it. So I ended up doing this little harpoon piece right here. That's going to have a swedge ground into it. So there's going to be bevels on here. The bevel is going to come up and meet it. You're going to have a cool little crisp line here. It's going to look really cool whenever I get it all done. You just got to trust the process. We're going to have a really nice handle on here. It's going to be simple profiled, but the material that I'm using, I think will work really well with this style of knife and it's gonna look so sweet. So, decent size, is it huge? No, could it have been massive? Yes, but I didn't know how much this material was gonna forge out. So, the fact that I was able to get this much height out of it is pretty cool. I could probably push it a little bit further if I forged it thinner, but I like the thickness of this for what I'm gonna use it for. So, it's gonna be pretty cool. I think that the bolster area turned out real nice. And all the way into the little finger choil area here. It's nice and rounded all the way through there and across here and across here. And all that was forged in. So I think it's going to turn out really cool. But tell me what you think. Tell me if you think it's going to turn out hideous so that whenever I get finished with it, you can go, oh yeah, that does look pretty cool. I think it's going to turn out cool, guys. So. Next episode, we're going to be doing, of course, the bevel grinding. We're going to be doing the soak and vinegar to get rid of all the forge scale, heat treat, all that stuff to make the blade finished so that in the next episode after that, we can put the awesome handle on it, just like we've been doing in the last few versions of this series. I think it's pretty cool. Hopefully, y'all are digging the different educational points in these particular videos. Plus, if you haven't been a part of it, on Thursdays, lately, I've been doing a live stream. So, I'm probably going to go ahead and do a live stream, but probably, I mean, I am, this Thursday at 7 o'clock Texas time. Figure out what that is. It's Texas time. About 7, 7.05, I'll hop on there. We'll do probably about a 35 to 45 minute live stream where I'm actually teaching something and the cool thing about the live streams is y'all can talk during it and type in the chat. I can read it and I can answer y'all's questions live. It's pretty cool. You know, I, I, there's not a ton of people doing it right now. And it's something that I wanted to start doing to be able to, you know, have more of a one-on-one -on -one with y'all. So make sure you tune in Thursday, 7 p.m. ish, Texas time. <laughs> so we're going to be doing that, guys. That's it for this episode. If you would, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there, and I'll catch y'all next time.